Hi folks, Mr. Dell here. We are looking at solving proportions, solving equations that have fractions equal to each other. That is a proportional relationship. So this is um, from CPM. Uh, this is CC3, the course three, uh, specifically section 5.1.1. So uh, number 5-7. I'm looking at, and I'll do a, a few of these, see how far we, we need to go. So A, uh, so it says solving each of the following equ equations for X, uh, then check your solution. So I'm going to rewrite because that's kind of small there. So A is X divided by 16 or X over 16 is equal to... Uh, 7 over 10. So what's the process? Well, when you're given a proportion or two equal fractions and you have to solve for a, a variable that happens to be either in the numerator, denominator, somewhere, there's um, a method of cross multiplication that works. So you've got two things. You could, you could use uh, fraction busters, which would be to find the common denominator of these two and multiply by that or there's cross multiplication. I'm gonna show you both. So let's use cross multiplication first. That would be multiplying diagonally across. So this becomes seven times 16 is equal to uh, 10 times X. So now you rewrite your equation without um, the fractions. So seven times 16 is, what is that 102? No, excuse me, actually 112. I'm do my math real fast there. Let me oops, let me rewrite that. Sorry, 112 is equal to uh, 10x. Correct. So now looking at that, the next step would be to divide both sides by 10 to get your x alone. Right. Inverse operation: 10 times x. So the inverse is division. So we divide by 10, and so our x would equal well 112 divided by 10 is 11.2. That decimal place moves over once when you divide by 10. So there's my answer using that method of cross multiplication. So what I wanna also point out, I'm gonna do the exact same question and use, uh, so this was using cross multiplication, cross multiply. And then I wanna use this one, I wanna use what I call, or what is known as uh, fraction busters. I didn't make that up. That is definitely something that has been known. Fraction busters. What you do with fraction busters is you find a number that each of those go into. Like what is the least common um, multiple or we could say the, the common denominator of 16 and 10? What does both 16 and 10 go into? And 90 would work, right? 16 goes into 90 uh, five times. Or, or not 90, 80. 16 goes into 85 times, and then 10 goes into 88 times. So I can multiply basically both the um, the the both sides by that common denominator. That's a fraction buster. So I multiply by 80 on both sides. Why did I choose 80? Again, because 16 goes into 80, 10 goes into 80. It's a one of the least common multiples of 16 and 80. So why does this work? Well, if we look and I multiply by 80, what's really happening here is I'm saying 80 times X over 16, and we can we can simplify that fraction, right? Cross simplify, that becomes a one and that becomes the five. Do the same thing over here, cross simplify, diagonally simplify, that becomes a one, that becomes an eight. So what do I have now? I have 5x is equal to uh, 5 times x, 5x is equal to 7 times 8, which is 56. So now I'm given the equation 5x equals 56. No longer do I have fractions. And then I could divide both sides by 5. And I get the answer of 56 fifths. Or if you look at this uh, and do the division here, uh, that would be 11 and 1 fifth. If you change that to a mixed number, which 11 and 1 fifth is 11.2, 11, 11 and 2 tenths, correct? So that's, we got the same answer, just different methods of getting there, either fraction busters or cross multiply. Okay, so that's, that's 5, 7, A. I know I took a little bit on that one. So let's, let's look at B and I'm going to do B. I'm going to use uh, cross multiply with B and then I'll use fraction busters with C just so we can see a little extra 
practice here. So B, the equation I have is 6 fifteenths is equal to 3 over X. And cross multiply lends itself to when you do, when you have a, the variable is in the denominator, it makes it a lot easier than trying to use fraction busters in this case. So this case, that cross multiply is a nice method to get to that X. So 3 times 15 is 45 is equal to 6 times X is 6X. And then quickly I go ahead and divide both sides by 6 to get my X alone. Because 6 divided by 6 crosses to be 1. And then uh, 45 divided by, divided by 6. Uh, let's see. I think I can simplify that top and bottom by 3. So that becomes 15 halves. If I take 3 into each of the into the numerator and denominator, I get 15 halves. So you could stay there and X equals 15 halves. Or you could say 7 and a half or... Um, continue on with that. So there's B. C. With C, uh, C, I'll rewrite C. C is 2x over 5 is equal to 12 over 8. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use fraction busters just so we can see that one, right? Fraction busters, what would be the common denominator with the 5 and the 8? Well, that would be 40. I would multiply top and bottom by 40, or excuse me, the both sides by 40. Right, the denominator five and eight are both go into 40. So I chose 40 because when I multiply that 40 over one times two X over five, those two cancel that five divides out to be a one and the 40 becomes an eight. So now I have this eight, I'll rewrite so we can see it. Eight times two X is what I've got on this side. And over here, the same thing, I could take that 40 over one, the eight divides out to be one and it divides into 40 to be five. So then I have 12 times five on this side, right? I'm just writing that out. I know you can then simplify that to be 16 X is equal to 60. And then at that point, divide both sides by 16. And you have X is equal to, well, let's see, that can simplify what goes in four. Four goes into 60, 15 times. Four goes into 16, four times. So it becomes 15 fourths. You can leave the answer like that, or you can write it as three and three fourths. Let's do the last one just for the sake of finishing this out. And that's uh, D. D is negative eight is equal to two over X. Okay. In this case, uh, right now you don't have a fraction equal to fraction, but I have a fraction on this side. I can make that a fraction. I could just change that to be negative eight over one is equal to two over X. And then I can, at that point, I'll just go ahead and use cross multiplying, All right? So two times one is two, negative eight times X is negative eight X. And then we're quickly, we can at that point divide top and bottom or divide both sides by negative eight. And so X equals what? Well, two divides by eight to be simplified to be one fourth. And the whole thing is negative. So negative one fourth. All right, there you go.